Hey guys, Snows here, and today we're continuing our good old dive into hard drive technologies. So, if you haven't watched the first video in the series, I would highly recommend it, since, well, it follows what we talked about there. Also, I worked hard on it, so please go check it out. We explored ways that were used from past to present to unlock more and more space in hard drive. Things like the platters, tracks, read and write heads, PMR, SMR, etc. But that only got us so far. There are current and future technologies that are pretty fascinating. And that's what we're here to talk about on your boot sequence. Alright, so we discussed the addition of up to 9 platters, thanks to Helium, or we can shingle the data which isn't the greatest way of doing things. So is there other ways of adding capacity, or a way to add speed to hard drive technology? Or are we going to have to bring back the good old 5 and a quarter inch drives? Yes, those existed. There were even 8 inch variants, which look monstrous. Anyways, is there still hope for the 3.5 inch form factor? Of course, let's start with some of the current innovations. Wiggly Arm So, the arms have pretty much been the same since the introduction of hard drives. Just a stiff bar with the read and write head on the end. One of the new innovations is adding multi-stage micro actuators along the arm of the drive. Or as I like to call it, the wiggly arm. So why does the arm need to flex and rotate like that? Well, here's a quick demonstration. All right, so here we have a hard drive up close. Let's add some tracks in. Maybe make them a little bit less obvious. Now let's move that arm over everything and brighten it up a bit so we can see its movements. From here, what do you think will happen? Well, the arms swing, in an arc of course. Pardon the wonkiness here, it was a pain to animate. Anyways, the arc is this red bar. Now the read head and the right head are along the arm. I'm going to grossly exaggerate their location for you guys. In blue is the right head, and in white is the read one. Now watch what happens as we plot their location throughout the disc. You can see that it doesn't totally track. Okay, what I mean is that along the edge and close to the center of the platter, the tracks have to be made thicker to accommodate the read and write head. Like you can see that it spills towards other tracks, and that makes us lose some valuable data space. But in the center of the radius of the disc, the head perfectly aligns and they can be made thinner there. Now, if we move the arm to the edge and we were to somehow be able to bend that arm just a little, like that, then we'd be able to fit all the data within those smaller tracks. That's pretty cool for some extra storage, but now what about the speed? Just have two. Another innovation in the arms department is having two separate actuators for the arms. Seagate actually announced that technology about two years ago and recently just released it on their Exos 2x14 drives. Compared to speeds of around 150 megabytes and write performance for typical drive, the Exos 2x can get that all the way up to 500 megabytes per second. So it's as fast as a SATA 3 SSD when moving large files. I just would not use it as a boot drive since it is still abysmal in read and writes of tiny files. It's still a hard drive after all. All right, so we got these two things for the arms. Let's move on and talk about recording technologies. They're called AMRs. AMR stands for uh, Assisted Magnetic Recording. First, there's Hammer, Heat Assisted Magnetic Recording. Remember when I said that uh, if we made the right head smaller, then the right head wouldn't be able to magnetize the data consistently? Well, with Hammer, a smaller head would be possible. Hammer uses a laser to heat up a very small portion of the disk, smaller than a grain of sand really, and it can heat that portion up to 700 degrees Celsius, which reduces the coercivity of the grains on a platter. Coercivity it just means that it's easier to flip the bit, aka magnetized a bit, aka write the data on the track. And since it makes it easier to write, then the tiny, weak, smaller head can write with a less powerful magnetic field. This allows for thinner and thinner tracks. Only issue here is the platter. 
can't go shooting lasers at any kind of platter that we have now. We need a new kind of platter that is designed to withstand the uh, temperature fluctuation. Oh, and by the way, the platters cool down the moment that the write is done, so no fire hazards here. In the future, hammer can also be used in conjunction with bit patterned media to create a whole new writing technology. It's called HDMR. HDMR is heated dot magnetic recording. They basically take the laser from hammer technology, make it way more precise and small. Then they take the platter and instead of having the groupings of grains on the surface become the bits on the platter, they essentially lay a pattern of slightly larger grains on the disc. These larger grained can be individually magnetized. Because of that, each bit or dot is way smaller than the group of grains. And then because each dot is smaller, we need to lower the coercivity of the dot before flipping it. This is where the smaller, more precise laser comes in. Because instead of heating a area of the disc, only the dot focused on will be heated, which is why they call it HDMR or heated dot magnetic recording. This will allow for more tracks, more bits, which means more space for data, which means just uh, more data on the same sized platter. Mammer. And then there's MAMR, or Microwave Assisted Magnetic Recording. It's pretty self-explanatory. It uses microwaves. The advantage here is that we can still use the current platter technologies. The right head uses something called a spin torque oscillator, which just like hammer, reduces the coercivity of the grains and lets the head write on the platter more easily and without heat. So it really seems like the name of the game is lower the coercivity at all costs. Now, both Hammer and Mammer are technically already shipping. It's pretty crazy, right? But they're only shipping to enterprise customers and in very small quantities, which means that it could be a couple of years before we receive it in the mainstream consumer market. And anyways, it's not like these technologies are stretching their legs right now. The Flux Control Mammer drive from Toshiba tops out at 18 terabytes and the Seagate Hammer drive at 20 terabytes. In the future, the proper implementation of Mammer could get you up to four terabytes per square inch, not per platter, per square inch. What's more insane is that Hammer slash HDMR shatters this with an incredible 10 terabytes per square inch. That means that we could go up to, I don't know, 120 terabyte on each drives. But for now here on earth and not in my dreams, the next big jump would be 30 terabytes using Hammer. Seagate is currently working on that for late 2023, early 2024. And in the future, we could have 40 plus terabytes. That's 2025 to 2026. The only other thing that I'm sure you're wondering is whether or not any of these technologies will improve the actual performance of hard drives instead of just capacity. Well, we talked about dual actuators, so maybe the next thing will be a triple actuator. Since a lot of these are still being developed, we haven't seen their full potential just yet. Let's just hope that all of these technologies don't hurt the longevity of such drives. Like this drive, well, it was fully functional before I sacrificed it for this very video. Sure, it was very loud, but it worked. Hopefully we can get that kind of longevity. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this extra long, extra deep dive into hard drives that was separated into two videos. Go check out the first one, please. As usual, please leave a like if you liked it, a dislike if you didn't. You can leave uh, a comment down below if you want to also, and you can click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe. Thanks for watching, stay frosty, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.